Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton, and today I'm gonna to explain HDL. In this video, I'm gonna explain what HDL is, what levels are best for you, what happens if it gets too low, some reasons why it might be too low for you, and give you some great tips on how you can get it exactly where you want it. If you're new to this channel, I'm Dave Clayton, and this is Cholesterol Mastery, where I teach you how to improve your cholesterol without taking medications. So let's start with what is HDL? HDL stands for high density lipoprotein. And a lipoprotein is a transport molecule that carries cholesterol around in the body. High density lipoprotein is generally tasked with taking cholesterol away from organs and cells and bringing it back to the liver where it can be reprocessed or excreted. Now, when our cholesterol levels are too high, cholesterol tends to build up in the walls of our arteries, putting us at risk of a heart attack or a stroke. HDL works to reverse that by taking that extra cholesterol and bringing it back to the liver where it can be excreted. But HDL's benefits don't end by just clearing out the arteries. HDL also works to actually repair the wall of the artery and keep that lining healthy. So it's kind of like a repair crew going out and cleaning out the junk from our arteries and then repairing that damage, keeping our arteries nice and healthy and limiting that risk of a heart attack or stroke. And for this reason, more HDL is better. So let's take a look at what levels are best for HDL. The best numbers for HDL generally tend to be over 60. Now, what happens if it goes lower than 60? Well, in that 40 to 60 range, your risk of a heart attack or a stroke starts to increase. We generally see that in these ranges, you may not have enough HDL cholesterol to do the kinds of repair work that we need to on the arteries. And as HDL goes lower, below 40 and down to even 20 or so, these are the ranges where you've really got to do some work to bring it up because your risk of a heart attack or stroke increases as HDL goes down. In fact, as you can see from this graph, as your HDL goes down, your risk of a heart attack or a stroke goes up. People who have a HDL closer to that 20 mark have about a four times higher risk of a heart attack or stroke than those people who have HDL over 60. So if your HDL is low, we definitely want to take steps in order to bring it up again so that we don't run this excess risk. Now let's look at a few reasons why your HDL might be low. Well, there's a few reasons and generally speaking, they all tend to congregate around lifestyle. So not enough of the right kinds of fats in your diet could definitely play a role. A high carbohydrate diet and diabetes can definitely play a role and being overweight is definitely a risk factor. Inactivity is certainly a risk factor, and all of these together tend to account for a lot of the cases of low HDL. Okay, so let's look at a few ways that you can increase your HDL without taking medications. Now this is important because there aren't really any drugs out there that can increase HDL and reduce your cardiovascular risk. A lot of drugs have been tried for this, but nothing has ever worked. So increasing your HDL truly is up to you. And here's a few things that you can do to improve your HDL levels. First and foremost, lose weight. If you've got more than a few pounds to lose, losing that weight may start moving your HDL in the right direction. Next, reduce your carbohydrate intake. High carbohydrate diets are associated with not only low HDL levels, but diabetes and high triglycerides, all of which compounds your cardiovascular risk. That's your risk of a heart attack or stroke. Alcohol can increase your HDL, and I don't want to encourage drinking, especially not problematic drinking, but a drink or two a day can definitely increase your HDL and has been shown to lead to higher HDL levels in people who drink rather than those who don't drink. So if drinking is a problem, talk to your doctor, but one or two drinks a day can definitely move your HDL in the right direction. And the last thing is exercise. Higher frequency and higher intensity exercise can definitely move your HDL in the right direction. And taken all together, this guidance of low carbohydrate diet, losing weight, being more active, and if it's not a problem for you, having a drink or two a day, 
all of that together can really boost your HDL to new highs. And if you need some more guidance for how to increase your HDL and you want some more specific guidance, definitely check out rx5.com. We've got a 30-day program with a complete diet and exercise program that can help you move your HDL up in a stepwise approach using targeted guidance and personalized coaching. So it's definitely worth a look if HDL is an issue for you. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want more tips on how to improve your cholesterol numbers, check out rx5.com, like and subscribe below, 